Okay. Still confused by these little things. <laughs> you like it. Well, you know, I know how to use what I have to do anything different through. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the continuation of our April 2018 meeting. Um, before we get started with our regular agenda tonight, we'll do some housekeeping items. Uh, starting with the approval of, do we approve the minutes from uh, March <coughs> last time? So skip mm -hmm. over that. Um, I'd also like to say thanks to Patrick Kelly for serving as chair uh, last uh, at Monday's meeting in the absence of myself and. Vice Chair Willie, as a former chair himself, I'm sure everything went swimmingly. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We'll start by uh, receiving any committee reports that met during the last month that was not uh, on, addressed on Monday. Commissioner Willie. And I'm sure it wasn't addressed on Monday because I was at the Planning Commission um, meeting in New Orleans. So the comp plan committee met on April 16th and we're continuing to go through chapter by chapter and, uh, and digest the public comment that came from the public comment period. Um, so we discussed the neighborhood and housing chapter and the economic <coughs> development chapter um, and then making suggestions that then staff will take back to come up with another draft then that will hopefully pass out of committee sometime in July and then that will come to the Planning Commission for a full public hearing at that point. All right, thank you. Um, are there any written communications from the public that are not in the packet? Uh, <clears throat> any communication from staff, other commission, uh, Planning Commissioners or other Commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chair, there, there has been non-written communication received by staff this week that has to do with a request to defer all of item 9, it's item parts 9A through E, that's the annexation request and accompanying rezonings. <clears throat> if, um, if the bylaws are our guide, this would be the appropriate time to take up that request and hear from the Planning Commission whether or not you want to defer the item. I'm prepared to make a real brief uh, presentation. The applicant is here, then I think we need to understand whether or not there's any members of the public here mm -hmm. on that. And your, so your first order of business is to determine whether or not to defer the item or to keep it on the agenda. So with your permission, I would get up and give you a little bit of information on that request. That'd be great, Scott. First of all, uh, is there a show of hands uh, from pub members of the public who are here to speak on item nine? Thank you. Scott, if you would. Hey, Mr. Uh, Chairman, if you could just confirm, that, did I see any hands raised or not? I saw no hands. Okay, so that's the annexation and, and rezoning <clears throat> request. So I'll be brief, it, it probably is a simpler matter that there's no one here from the public um, to was planning to speak to this. But we did receive a couple of uh, letters of communication on it, so I know that there are people interested. So, the just real briefly, then, um, <coughs> there's about four <coughs> parcels that have been requested to be annexed into the city and then be rezoned to city city zoning standards. Um, a couple of the parcels are served with an existing sewer known as the Baldwin Creek Sewer Interceptor. <coughs> And uh, those parcels are intended to be developed residentially. There's about, that's about half of the property. The other half of the property is not yet served by sewer. And a sewer that generally f would, f would be located where my arrow is, through another creek bed, would be needed to serve those parcels. This will maybe help a little bit more. So, 
these are these same parcels, the subject request, and this is the Baldwin Creek Basin that exists today to serve the parcels that would be developed residentially, the red area. The green area is outside of this basin, and the choices to serve it would be either with a pump station or through that sewer main extension coming from the existing main up to the north. Um, the, the part that's changed in the applicant's reason for requesting deferral is because originally there was discussion about serving the green areas with a pump station over the ridge and down into the existing sewer, which would then gravity flow it back to the north and east. Through very recent discussions with utility staff, um, the determination has been made that the city is not very likely to support that kind of development um, infrastructure. And so the applicant wants to defer the item in order to explore the possibilities of funding and, and the mechanics behind getting a benefit district formed for this green area, which symbolizes the sewer needed to serve those northern and western properties. So I think there's a substantive change here. It's not just needing more time to argue the points of the case, as, as far as I am concerned. It's really trying to explore ways to get infrastructure, to bring that information back to the commission, to make it part of your consideration on the annexation request. Thank you, Scott. So it, it, I would urge you to uh, hear from the applicant as well, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Is the applicant here? Good evening, commissioners. I'm David Hamby with BG Consultants representing the applicant. I uh, appreciate the time the staff has put on this report. And I think uh, Scott nailed it as far as uh, the reasons for this request. We're really working hard to try to tie down those loose issues and really the uh, main loose issue is just how to serve the property with sewer. And I think um, with a few meetings, hopefully we can tie down and determine if, if that's a possibility or not. And I think tonight <coughs> would be premature, I believe, to try to make a decision when we don't have all that information available to us and to you. Okay. Um, any questions for the applicant on, on this, commissioners? Um, in my view, uh, we can see that we, we do have a letter in, in our packet from uh, a neighbor, an attorney representing a neighbor, um, discussing the uh, future plans for um, sewage and utilities in this area. And as we can see by this, um, this um, picture on the screen right now, there is a plan for future development in this area. And I think, in my view, it probably is appropriate to uh, give a chance to explore and discuss this uh, between the, the, for the city and the applicant to discuss this further, perhaps in a way that is more in keeping with, with the plan we do have. Uh, as I, the, the letter I referred to uh, also refers to the lack of a master plan. Although we don't have a specific master plan, we do have a general outline of what we expect our utility system to look like up there. Um, this may be an opportunity to uh, bring this proposal into better line with what we do have uh, as far as a future plan. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, and with that, um, I'll entertain discussion or a motion uh, to defer. Commissioner Willie. I'd make a motion that we defer. And this, would this be to the next meeting or is this going to take some time? Indefinite. I would say an indefinite deferral and give us okay. time to, to work on this, these issues. Okay. I would make a motion to defer it indefinitely until the applicant is ready to bring the, the whole packet back. Thank you, Commissioner. We have, a, we have a motion to defer. Do we have a second? Second. Commissioner Carpenter, thank you. Any further discussion on the motion to defer? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor of deferral, please raise your hand. Motion carries 10-0. Thank you. On to our regular agenda items, starting with I believe we're on item seven. Mm -hmm. A rezoning <coughs> at North 17, uh, 548 and North 1700 Road. Good evening, Mary. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Mary Miller, one of the planning staff. 
This rezoning is a request to rezone from the A and A1 districts <coughs> back to the agricultural or A district for approximately 2.54 acres located at 548 North 1700 Road. This site contains the Canwaka Township Road Department structures and their equipment. And Canwaka Township recently purchased the area that's not green is their original property. They recently purchased this piece of property from the neighbor and that went through with a minor subdivision so their lot, lot boundaries have changed but now we have different zoning districts on this property and the township would like to in the future expand their facility and so that they could um, have more of their structures back here to the west. That would require an amended CUP but it would be necessary to rezone to one uniform zoning district that way we're sure we have uniform standards across the property. The township use would be allowed in either zoning district with the CUP so it's not an issue of whether the use is allowed it would just allow uniform standards. Now we look at the golden factors when we look at a CUP just like we do with a rezoning and this is a rezoning in this case. Uh, the area is primarily zoned agriculture the yellowish area is zoned A1 which is suburban home residential district and it's developed it's a platted residential subdivision. We're just expanding the area for the CUP slightly it's already in existence so it should still be compatible with the surrounding zoning and land uses. The character of the area is primarily agriculture and rural residential with the more dense rural residential development right next to the township. And so the rezoning should still be compatible. Horizon 2020 recommends that we maintain or upgrade existing facilities and services where necessary to serve existing development and that's what the township is hoping to do to expand their township road department to better serve their township. So it is compatible with the comprehensive plan. There is no area plan for that area. Um, we always look at are there any potential detrimental effects on nearby properties and this will be looked at when they do expand their CUP use and amend the CUP. We would look at perhaps making sure they're screening all along the west side of the property um, and any other possible detrimental effects. If they were going to have an outdoor lighting, <coughs> we would look at that. But just the rezoning itself, there should be no detrimental effects on nearby properties. We look at other factors. What is the suitability of the property to the uses to which it's restricted? Right now it's out A1, which would restrict it to residential or to uh, limited agricultural uses. Schools, it's just a small strip of land on a larger parcel, so it's not suitable to those uses. It is suitable, though, to the township use, which would be permitted with the CUP in either district. We look at how long has it been vacant as zoned. The township got approval for their CUP in 1990, and the house to the west was built in 1998, so these have been in place quite some time. And we look at the effects of denial. What would be the effect beyond the public versus that on the applicant? <coughs> If the um, request was denied, the township could probably still go ahead and amend their CUP. It just may, it could cause some issues in the future if we have some different standards between the different zoning districts on the one lot or if we adopt regulations in the future that change those. It's better to have one zoning district so we can have uniform standards. Uh, there would be no positive effect to the public by denial. There could be a positive effect by approval in that the township department's services would be improved due to the ability to improve their facilities. And so staff recommends forwarding this to the Board of County Commissioners with a recommendation for approval uh, based on the findings of fact in the staff report. Thank you, Mary. Is the applicant here tonight? Nobody from here? Okay. Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll bring it back up to the commission for discussion or a motion. Commissioner Sands. I'd like to make a motion to recommend forwarding the rezoning request of approximately 2.54 acres from A Agricultural to A1 Suburban Home <coughs> Residential District to A Agricultural District to the Board of County Commissioners with a recommendation for approval based on the findings of fact found in the body of the staff report. Thank you, Commissioner Sands. We have a motion to recommend approval. Do we have a second? Second. Commissioner Weaver, thank you. <coughs> We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on the commission? Then all those in favor, in favor of approval, please raise your hand. 
Motion passes 10-0. Thank you, Mary. On to item eight, conditional use permit, 1055 East 1500 Road. Sorry, it'll be just a second. Okay. Thank you, um, Mary Miller, planning staff. This is a conditional use permit request for a recreation facility or an event center and a CUP use called rooming, boarding, and lodging house for a short term <coughs> or vacation rental at 1055 East 1500 Road. The property contains approximately one and a quarter acres and is located, as I said, at 1055 East 1500 Road. Um, the applicant provided a narrative of use, which is in your agenda packet. Uh, they're planning the ground floor to be the event center that would be about 1400 square feet and they're proposing to hold weddings family reunions business retreats luncheons and um, such type of uses there the uses might be indoors or outdoors they do have an area on the cub plan identified for outdoor activities and then the second floor contains a 658 square foot what will be an apartment a two-bedroom apartment for the short term or vacation rental or i guess you call it an airbnb uh, the, as I mentioned, the property contains about one and a quarter acres. We did get a public question about um, sanitary sewer, if they're allowed to have septic systems on properties of this size. Um, there was a change in the code at one point which made a, the minimum size you could have for a development parcel of three acres in order to have that. That was the Douglas County Sanitary Code that was revised. But they did grandfather in properties that were in place prior to that. So this is a grandfathered property. So we can have a septic system on the property. Uh, one of the conditions of the CUP is that the health department has to approve the septic system. So if they get approval of their CUP, they will work with the health department to adequately size the septic system and install it. And it must be approved and installed before the CUP use can commence. Uh, the area is not currently served by Rural Water District. Rural Water District number four said they could petition to be included into their boundaries and extend a water main to serve the um, property with rural public water. Uh, the health department noted that um, if they wanted to use bottled water, that would be acceptable. This property was recently the subject of quite a bit of enforcement activity. This is an older aerial. Our most recent aerial show that it was a blighted property, a lot of exterior storage across the property. And the Zoning and Codes Office um, was working to clear that up. And as the applicant noted in his narrative, he's been working the past year to clean it up, so to make it more suitable for his proposed use. Uh, the proposed event center and short-term rental would allow the adaptive reuse of the old Fairview School, and it was built in 1890. The only change being proposed to the site is the addition of a gravel parking area. It's along the north side of the building. North is to the right here, the north side of the building, and there'll be some along the east side. We calculate the amount of parking that's required based on the maximum occupancy. And so early in the application, they were given the maximum occupancy of 200 occupants. Um, parking is required on the basis of one parking space per five occupants, which is 40 parking spaces. and the residential use would require one parking space, 41 parking spaces. And that's what's being provided here. And with gravel parking areas, we usually just look at the dimensions of the parking area. A county parking space has to be 180 square feet, which is typically 18 feet long by 10 feet wide. And uh, looking at the width of these parking areas and the depth, they do have enough room for these 
this number of parking spaces. The county engineer had um, been working with the applicant. The applicant had hoped that uh, proposed improvements to East 1500 Road would include lowering of the hill at the area. Um, the county engineer indicated that was not going to happen, and so he recommended that the driveway, where it's currently in this location, and he was going to move it to this, the county engineer indicated it should be moved as far south as possible. Uh, the site distance here would, be, would meet desi design criteria. And so moving that um, access point to the south may involve some changes to the site plan. He may have an access drive that comes over to connect to the parking lot. If there were significant changes, if, for instance, if the parking layout changed and the site plan had to be revised, that would need to go to the county commission for approval. If it was a minor change, just as just um, attaching the access drive to connect to the parking, that could be done administratively. <coughs> And so we review CUPs with the golden factors as well. We look at the zoning and uses of property nearby. Uh, the subject property is located adjacent to agriculturally zoned properties on the east and south and A1 zoned property on the north and west. This is a platted rural subdivision. And if you look at the figure on the right, you can see that there's quite a bit of rural residential development in the area. So the use could be compatible with these adjacent uses. It, it's important with an event center to apply conditions to ensure there's no negative impacts. Um, event centers can sometimes have uh, outdoor lighting. There can be outdoor activities and noise, late hours, and other activities. So with the review of the CUP, we'd be applying conditions to limit those negative imp impacts. Uh, we look at the character of the area to see if it's compatible with the character of the area. This shows the transportation network. East 1500 Road is a principal arterial. It's um, Haskell and the city limits at East 1500 outside. It connects to North 1000 Road, which is also a principal arterial, and connects to Highway 59, which is classified as a freeway. So it has good access to the higher classification transportation network. And this shows the character of the area. It's a, a mix of agriculture and residential. So the subject property is surrounded on all three sides, primarily by residential <coughs> development. And on the south, there's a, a church with a sports facility, and it has undeveloped land to the south of it. And so the use could be compatible with the character of the area. They are reusing a historical structure in the area. And so it could be an amenity, but it would be necessary to apply those conditions to ensure that it is compatible. We look at if it's compatible with the recommendations in the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan doesn't include a lot of recommendations for recreational uses. Um, the short-term rental, there are no recommendations for that, but this is primarily a residential area, so it would be seen to be compatible. The comp plan does, however, recommend conference, recreation, or tourism uses in the county be located, or the ones that benefit or integrate with rural settings to be located at areas that substantially satisfy the following criteria, to have direct access to an arterial road, public water supply available, to be three miles from another conference or recreational facility, or another distance as determined by the county commissioners, and be designed to preserve and or integrate natural resources and the rural environment. This request meets all four criteria with the exception of number two. A public water supply is not readily available right now. They would have to um, petition into Rural Water District 4 and extend the main, but they would be able to use the potable water that the health department has approved. And so they do substantially satisfy the following criteria. We look at other items. What is the suitability of the property to the uses that it's restricted to now? It's um, in the A zoning district, so it's restricted to agriculture. Residences you could have a church or a school or a veterinary clinic. Um, it's suitable to most of these uses. It's not very suited to the agricultural uses due to its small size and its development with the schoolhouse. And it could also be suitable to the CUP use that's being proposed with the uh, appropriate conditions. The length of time it's vacant, well, it was developed since 1890, so it has not been vacant. Potential detrimental effects. And as I mentioned, when we looked at potential detrimental effects with event centers, we primarily are worried about lighting trespass or glare, the noise or activity associated with late night events, and with dust from traffic on gravel roads. These are the principal ones that come up when we review these. 
Uh, the applicant indicated he wants to use lights that are similar to those existing on the building now, and you'll see those three pictures show kind of a barn-type light, and the one up in the right top corner shows the kind of new lighting he'll be getting, which is pretty similar. And the, these should be full cut off and direct light downward and not have glare, and these would be on the building itself. He did note that he'd be adding a pole light at the access point, and it may be necessary to have some pole lighting where the parking area is to make sure it's lit well enough for safety. And one of the conditions is that the applicant provide more information on the lighting so we can be sure that the light poles are as short as possible uh, and that the light fixtures are full cut off and so that it, you don't create glare to neighboring properties. The uh, county engineer indicated that the improvements to East 1500 Road would require him to have a 15-foot setback from the property line. It's 50 foot from the center line of the road, which ends up being 15 foot from his property line, where there can be no improvements. And that's just to allow room for the improvements they're going to be making to the road. And so the parking area is pulled back, and then any landscaping is being shown right at that 15 foot setback. Uh, this shows the two parking areas. It shows the outdoor event area that's to the south. And it shows the landscaping that's being, uh, some of this is in place now. If it was removed or damaged, it would need to be replaced. We don't have specific lists of landscaping. With rural properties such as this, people typically just add cedar trees. You're just creating a buffer, so we don't have specific landscaping requirements. And then the dust on the uh, roads is not an issue due to the fact that it's on a paved arterial and has direct access to other paved arterials. So the dust would not be an issue. Now, other things we look at is suitability. I mentioned that, and the length of time, potential detrimental effects, and then what would be the gain to the public health, safety, and welfare by the denial compared to the hardship to the applicant? If the request was denied, it would not be possible to reuse the facility as an event center or a short-term lodging. Um, the benefit, you would gain a benefit <coughs> if there were negative impacts associated with that use, but if we conditioned it appropriately, then there would be no gain to the public by denying the application. Uh, we did receive some public communications, and those were in your packet. Uh, we received a letter that was concerned that this might turn into a music venue, kind of something similar to a bar use. Um, they are allowed to have some alcohol on site. It's with a CUP, it has to be brought in by a caterer. They don't have a liquor license. And the hours that the applicant is proposing, 10 p.m. on weeknights and 11 on weekends, is pretty early for a music venue, so I don't think that would be a danger. Uh, we received questions about traffic concerns, uh, safety of the driveway location, the impact of additional traffic on East 1500 Road, and also is there a way to prevent people from turning around if they miss the driveway, to prevent them from turning around other people's driveways. I forwarded those questions to the county engineer. He couldn't be here today. He's out of town, but he provided the information um, here. He mentioned that uh, to make this driveway as safe as possible and to make it comply with design standards, it needs to be moved to the south to line up with North 1050 Road. Uh, the impact of additional traffic, he said there's about 1,500 vehicles per day on East 1500 Road, which is appropriate. And the addition of 50 additional more vehicles would be an increase of only 3%, and he was not concerned with that increase on the road. And um, as far as drivers using driveways to turn around, he said there's no way we can stopped it from doing that, but he noted that the part of the driveway that's in the right-of-way is maintained by the county, and the public has the right to use that to turn around. So as long as they're not pulling onto your side of the driveway, there's not usually an issue with that. Uh, we did have a question about enforcement. Um, the, the enforcement with a, uh, with a blighted property, being a residential property, and the enforcement with a CUP, uh, they, they differ slightly, and the Director of Zoning and Codes is here today if you have questions about how enforcement is handled. Um, he's also here if you have any questions on the building code or the building permit process. Um, the zoning regulations actually contain an amendment or revocation provision of conditional use permits. If the conditions aren't applied with, it can be returned to the county commission and they can amend it or revoke it. And so there is an enforcement built into the regulations. It is complaint based. The uh, county doesn't have the staff to go out and monitor all the CUP uses, but it is complaint based. 
Um, as far as the plans for building improvement and septic system, they asked if they could see those. Uh, the plans for the building improvement will be submitted with the application for building permits and will be reviewed by zoning and codes. And uh, the use cannot commence, you know, they can do the improvements, but the use cannot commence until the zoning and codes office has issued a certificate of occupancy. And also the health department would be the ones to approve the septic system. And so we never review those plans. We leave that to the health department. If they determine there is, it's adequate and they can um, have a septic system, it needs to be approved and installed before the use can commence. And they also asked about the possible impact on property values. Um, there's no way to actually foresee what impact any use will have on adjacent property values. But if the, uh, the use applies with the conditions that we have, I think the adaptive reuse of the small school building could be an amenity in the area, and I don't expect it to have negative impacts. And so staff's recommendation is the approval of the CUP and forwarding it to the county commission with the recommendation for approval based on the findings in the staff report and subject to the conditions with a, one change to the conditions. I noted the conditions with the hours ending at 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. and I would need to revise that to make it clear that only applies to the event center, so not to the short-term rental. Thank you, Mary. I'll let you know if we have any more questions. Is the applicant here tonight? Or a representative of the applicant? Yes. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Stan Treacle, and I am the applicant for the conditional use permit for Fairview Number 21 School at 1055 East 1500 Road. I purchased the property in early of August of 2017, and um, there was quite a project just getting the property itself, the grounds cleaned up. I ended up hiring a staff of eight people and we were there two and a half months picking up trash and emptying out the structure itself because hoarders had been living there. And from what staff at the um, county level, the zoning department has told me as they were coming into Lawrence on nightly raids, they were picking up bags of trash off the curbs, they were taking them home, they were ripping them open on the front lawn and then they were rifling through them and if there was anything that they could either scrap or anything of value they would keep. And uh, it got to the point where trash was blowing onto the adjacent neighbor's property. So someone, sometime along the line, put up some snow fence to try to retain the trash on the property. And uh, I have gone through and deadwooded the trees and taken out some trees. But the understanding that I have with the um, planning staff is that the existing tree lines be maintained uh, anything that was dead or dying or down droopers has been cut down or cut off and the rest of the tree lines both to the west and the north and the south will be maintained um, as a visual screen <coughs> for the property. This building was built in 1890. It's a balloon frame structure setting on a limestone foundation and uh, in spite of all of the neglect that it has seen over the last few years, the structure itself is incredibly sound, which I didn't have a way of knowing that when I purchased it because you could not see the structure. Uh, these rooms were full of <coughs> trash and debris stacked up five and six foot tall. There were cats without litter boxes and there were two adults and, and one child living there. And from what I understand, is that the county didn't move in with as much enforcement and the strong arm of the law on their side because they wanted to make sure that SRS had everything rolled into place for getting the parents to surrender the child, which they ended up doing. And so um, that's when I came on the scene and that's when I started cleaning up the property and grooming the property. And my first interest in the work and the staff that I hired was to make sure that we began to make a statement to people driving by the property that things had changed. And I've had people stop by and thank me for that. Uh, they said, you know, they've watched this property go through several incarnations over the years, and they're glad to see somebody that's got an interest in preserving the heritage of the property is working diligently in order to get it cleaned up. So I mothballed the project in late October until the weather broke this spring and then um, depending upon the outcome of this application process will determine the redevelopment of the property. 
And one thing, if you'll indulge me just a minute, that I would like to read from a 1935 Journal World article. And they're talking about the building that's on site now. There was a, a previous building there, and it was moved off site, and it became a horse barn, and it was struck by lightning and burned to the burned to the ground and so this article is referring to the current structure and it says in short that the new building became a community center where various kinds of meetings were held a well-attended sunday school was one of the first gatherings but also political meetings literary society meetings every two weeks in the winter and spelling bees were also held there at some later date the local grange lodge met in the schoolhouse a singing school was also found uh, at one time and that the meetings of the literary society were said to be uh, the ones that gave the keenest enjoyment and the greatest number of people of all ages from all uh, other communities nearby as well for it provided a variety of entertainment recitations select reading songs and music and so if I were to want to characterize the type of events that I'm interested in holding there they are going to be for polite society I uh, contacted, I'm a local realtor, I've been in Lawrence for 43 years, and I contacted our legal hotline this afternoon asking the questions if, if I, you know, was within my legal right to not rent to certain user groups. And I think a, 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 a realistic concern would be, you know, uh, student living groups is the first one that comes to my mind, fraternity parties, sororities you know, dormitory parties. I'm not interested in that audience because it's going to be an upscale finish. It's going to be something that everyone can be proud of. And uh, I welcome the opportunity to move forward with this. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing item. If any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, please come to the podium, sign in, say your name. Tell us where you live. <clears throat> My name is Ralph Leary. Good evening to you guys. I was born and raised on this 80 acres that the schoolhouse sets on. I went to school there. My brother went to school there. My dad went to school there. We've been out there since 1870. I and my brother developed housing right around this schoolhouse. It borders on the north and it borders on the west. We tried to make a community that was quiet nice and for older people we have quite a few people that are retired we have some that are still working i'm retired and i live on that same 80 acres that i was born on so my big concern is is the septic system and that picture that was up there a little while ago that showed the building and on would be the south side, as I know it, was going to be an offshore recreational area. And the way I understand it from people that I've talked to, that's where the septic system goes. Now, would that be a very good place to be holding a volleyball game or people out there having a picnic on septic lines, that's the only place that it can go, is on that side of the building. And if this building is going to hold, I don't know how many people, let's say 50 to 100, maybe that's too high, 40 to 80, is there going to be more than one bathroom in there? How many bathrooms do we have to have? When we built on three acres out there, we had to have like 450 feet of lateral for a house. Now, when you put 40 people or 50 people in there, 
and they're using the bathroom and they're going to have a outside deal. The only place they can have it, what I see, of the app is on this ground where the lateral fields run. Rainy weather, you know what happens. I know what happens. They come up, the water comes up. Because I've got them all over our ground. We had to put in laterals on 22 houses. So that's my big concern is the lateral fields, the parking, the entryway in. If you come, if you're going south, there's a grade there. They're there all my life. Cars go by there 55 mile an hour. No. They go there 60 mile an hour or 65 mile an hour. So this is my concern. If I seen anything for that building would be a single residence. Fix it up. Yes, don't tear it down. But make it into a single residence. Just don't have a place out there. We've got one weekend we've got these people coming. Next weekend, somebody's staying there and they're having another meeting. Yeah, when I was in 4-H, we had meetings there. Yeah. <coughs> but my big concern is the septic. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to observe the time. We have a three minute limit. Pardon? Uh, time, sir. Time. Yes. I'm up. I'm up. Yes. I'm done. Thank you. I, I'm Thank sorry. You. Uh, may I ask for your name? I didn't catch it. Ralph Leary. Thank you. 1085 East 1479 Road. That was my second question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For the public comment, please. Good evening. Mr. Smith. How are you doing, Eric? Okay. Excellent. That's Mr. Chairman to you. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> pardon me. I've written down some brief comments. Thank you very much for your time again. Tony Smith, I live at 1043 East 1500 Road. Uh, my wife and I own the house there. We're directly south of the school. We're a couple hundred yards away, our front door, away from the school building's front door. So there's, there's several concerns that I have about this CUP request, and they include, but not limited to, traffic, health and safety, building and property code enforcement, potential CUP guideline enforcement, emergency response preparation, uh, the degradation of our property value, as well as noise and light pollution. Now I know the committee or other departments are likely to request studies to be done for most of the items on this list, but there's two of them that I'm pretty sure that the committee is not going to request studies on. And that would be the value of the property or the effect of the value of the property, uh, the neighbors of the school, as well as the noise and light pollution. Buyers that are looking for a peaceful community, for a peaceful country living, are not gonna be interested in buying a home that is next door to a business that in all actuality, based off of this, the CUP request, will be operating at 24-7, 365, with potentially limited monitoring. In fact, once prospective buyers do their due diligence and research into the neighborhood, and they realize that there is an event center in the neighborhood, they will likely go elsewhere to look for a house to purchase. Or, at best, they will try to negotiate a cheaper price for the home simply because they're going to be buying an inconvenience of a visitor or of an entertainment center right next to or in the neighborhood they're living. <coughs> the event center is not going to be a selling feature for our neighborhood. It will not add value to the property. Events potentially could be booked at the Fairview School every day. And mo don't make no mistake about it, it's a business. And businesses, as we all know, are in it to make money. 
These bookings could include, but wouldn't be limited to, concerts, which could be inside or out, uh, wedding receptions, fraternity or sorority parties, holiday parties, business meetings, family reunions, or it could even go as far as VRBO, Airbnb, or even a bed and breakfast. Based on the permit request that I'm sure you've all had a chance to review, these types of events, these types of events would take place 365 days a year until 10 or 11 p.m. potentially every night. So when you're trying to turn in to go to sleep at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night because you've got an early meeting, ask yourself if you're, you would like your neighbor to be next door blaring loud music or out on the back porch having a good time yelling and screaming. I'm pretty sure you would not and neither do we. As I said, there's for sure going to be loud music. Renters, which is what these folks are, would be yelling and screaming. There would be traffic moving in and out of the driveway. And there would actually be a party atmosphere at the school. 30 seconds, please. Ca I'm sorry? 30 seconds, please. We're good. Thanks. Cars, delivery vehicles, waste management, trucks, catering service, equipment vehicles, and shuttle services could all be entering and exiting the property of all hours of the day. All of these noises and light pollutions will severely impact my wife and I's ability and our neighbors, which are next to the school, our ability to enjoy the largest investment that we are making. There will be no peace. So we're asking you to deny this request for the CUP. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further pub public comment? Good evening, commissioners. My name is Sonia Smith. I'm Tony Smith's wife. I reside at 1043 East 1500 Road, as my husband said, just south of the property requesting this permit. I have a brief statement. Um, there are some questions in here, but I'm going to read the statement in its entirety. Um, per the recommendations that were in this um, agenda, we've noticed that there's use of recommendations. They're not requirements. Thus, we wish to know, um, do all these conditions need to be met in order to gain this permit? And if not, I guess what's the, per the request for the recommendations in the first place? Since all of these conditions affect the neighboring properties and, are on, and or the safety to the adjacent roadways and properties, we believe meeting all these conditions are very critical. As a general statement to address the most critical recommendations listed, listed by the staff, the owner will incur considerable expense. As a business owner, the priority will be to recover these costs in the operations of the business, which would lead us to believe that given hundreds of thousands of dollars, will be spent on this shell of a property. In order to get it into the working order, aggressive action would be taken to keep the establishment in constant operation in order to recuperate these expenses. This could mean the hours of operations could be becoming a revolving door, especially in the case of an Airbnb. Vacationers or renters will most certainly use the outdoor spaces at all, all hours with the neighboring properties exposed to these activities, things as talking, music, walking, in and out of traffic. And these will certainly go beyond the 10 to 11 o'clock cutoff. And in those cases, who will manage this? Who will stop them? There are no consequences, there's no fines, only the constant annoyance to the neighboring properties. And with the properties, property continuing under the same ownership, we have no reason to believe there will be a change in accountability in the management. The main issue with this conditional use permit is that it operates on the honor system. Lack of compliance to rules and ordinances are only met with a finger wag from the sheriff or the county. There's no such authority against non-compliance. Unless laws are broken, there are no consequences, no fines, no shutdowns. Again, if granted, the permit unleashes freedom to the operator and no protections to the neighboring properties. It's pretty much done. We're not signing up for the management of this establishment, but we will make sure in all instances, we will contact the associated agencies to make them aware of each non-compliance every time should this conditional use permit be approved. And we would like to formally request that it be denied. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. 
for the public comment. My name is Doug Riley. I live at 1040 East 1500 Road, across from Tony and Sonia Smith. Mine's brief. <clears throat> the reason why I moved out into the country is because of the quiet and serene serenity that I, that I got when I first moved out there. I've been out there almost 20 years, and I've raised my kids, and I think they've enjoyed that atmosphere too. To put in a an Airbnb or, or whatever you decide on that would uh, force me personally to probably put my property up for sale before the place is done if you say we're going to do it and move elsewhere and try to get the same type of atmosphere that I've got for the last 20 years. So again, uh, short and brief, I hope you say no and that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further public comment? Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, Art Keeler. Um, I live at 1494 North 1062 Road. Uh, my wife Nancy and our house is located two doors directly north to this facility. I have two concerns like everybody else has concerns. One is the health department, lateral lines. I built a new house on three acres. Uh, we barely had enough room on three acres to put the four or five hundred foot of lineal, lineal feet of laterals onto that piece of property just to serve a residential. How are we going to serve a facility that's going to bring however many people to the facility? My other main concern is uh, I'm sure everybody in this place knows Haskell Avenue is one of only three intersections to K-10 bypass around Lawrence. I would like to know when the traffic study was done, because I can tell you when K-10 opened up in the last year, the traffic has doubled. Believe me, we know our bedroom is the closest to that road, and we hear it every night. Within the last year that that road opened, we have had probably four to six vehicles pulled out of our ditch. We have also had the county come out, removed all of the trees on our property line because 14, or North 1062 Road is on top of the hill. And they said it was a traffic hazard because the impact of the traffic on the road, they couldn't see the vehicles in time, so they cut all of our trees down. Now we're going to take a facility, put it less than 300 <coughs> feet maybe 400 feet to the south of this intersection, and we're going to put another 40 to 50 cars at one time on the road. We can't accommodate for the cars that are out there of the 10 or 15 cars coming out of, out of the 1062 road that the county says is a hazard. So I just don't understand how we're going to get the traffic out there. That's all. Thank you, sir. Further public comment, please. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Leela Leary. I live at 1085 East 1479 Road. I, I would like to ask a question. How many of you have been out there to see the property? Good. So do you realize when you're coming from the north to the south, that road just prior to this to the Fairview School where my husband and, and my brother-in-law went to school there's a road that goes into the area where they have developed this area that has families and children and grandchildren but there's also that little ledge there that if you're coming 55 to 60 mile an hour going south and somebody ahead of you or someone coming from the south to north are really going to have to break if you want to take that turn into the Fairview Schoolhouse. So I, one, I find it as not safe in that area, in that busy road. I also can imagine it being similar to, and I'm sure you all know the Shockey Pumpkin Patch, east of that place where they have a, par a, a true party house. But I can also imagine through a 
party get together in that there's going to be beer bottles over by arts. There's going to be beer bottles over to dear old arts who's in his 90s. There are going to be beer bottles to the south and cans that have to be picked up. That's reality. Across from the schoolhouse is a little elderly lady in a trailer house. So all around it, and then you have the school, all around it is strictly, except for a patch there, which is still maintained as agriculture, is all residents. Um, if anything, you know, a single house development with a single family on it, just like the area that we have, would would be just fine. I, I see no problem with that. Um, single family resident would have a nice yard for kids. Kids love yards. It's not safe for your animals at all. We've had so many dogs killed. Um, even some of the neighbors that don't fence, the dogs get killed. Um, so my concern is really is the safety of the road and as has been mentioned in the past is the amount of laterals that we were required just in on three acres to put in. Shortly after we finished the property there, which has been several years ago, it was bumped up them to five acres. So you can no longer put an individual house on three acres. So please do consider that. Please consider the denial of this request. Thank you. So further public comment. Hello. Evening. I'm Roger Wolfram. I live at 1510 North 1050. So right across where the driveway is being proposed being moved. And my main concern is what my neighbors have all mentioned. I'd just like to agree with all their comments and statements as far as the septic and the road safety. Um, I have not lived there near as long as those folks. I'll be, the, be there three years, and they are 100% correct that coming up over the hill to the south is, is not the safest. When I turn into my driveway, I have to watch both in my, I have to be extra careful when I'm pulling in there. And the driveway being directly, proposing being directly across from my driveway is only going to add to that risk. And uh, that that is a I'll keep it very short, but I think it's a real valid concern along with everyone else's comments. So thank you for your time. Thank you. So any further public comment? Seeing none, we will close the public comment period and give the applicant a chance to respond to the comments we've heard here. One of the things that I would like to mention this evening is the gratitude that I have both towards the planning staff, the state health department, the Douglas County Health Department, planning and zoning and code enforcement. I have found everybody to treat me with courtesy and professionalism and it has been a great learning experience for me. I've never done anything exactly like this before. One thing that I haven't shared with anyone to this point in time is I am a former nationwide event promoter. And you could call any of the arenas and convention centers that I've used in the past and they will tell you what kind of a promoter I was and that I ran clean shows and they never had an incident for the 20 years that I was in that, that field of endeavor. So I want to discuss some of the points that have been brought out and I'll start with the concern for the septic system. The health department is not going to allow me to do anything that will not accommodate the occupancy load. And it's being referred to as a recommendation. I view it as a requirement. They are going to come out and do a study on the septic system. There is no record of the septic system with the health department. So they don't know how large the tank is. They don't know how long the lateral fields are. So they are going to come out and investigate that system to find out if it needs to be improved. There's probably good reason to believe that it is going to need to be approved. And until it's installed, 
I would not be granted permission or a permit in order to do business on the premises. So it is being suggested as a recommendation. I take it as a requirement. Um, there's also, in my discussions with people in the septic business, what's called an engineered system. And that may easily accommodate the lateral fields that uh, that, that would require. Uh, the number of bathroom stalls is also something that is going to help determine the occupancy limit. Mary talked a little bit about the requirement for parking, but there's also a similar requirement for the number of bathroom stalls. And uh, there is enough room in the building in order to accommodate the number of bathroom stalls required. Um, parking. Uh, maybe some of the people here that have spoken out don't know that it, beginning in January of 2019, the county is going to go in and completely rebuild East 1500 Road. And they're going to be installing 12 foot wide lanes because what's there now are 11 foot lanes and that does not conform to the uniform, the uniform traffic code. And they're going to put in eight, eight foot shoulders, which I think everybody would be in favor of that because <coughs> the, the alternative <coughs> is the ditch. And it's a very steep V style ditch. So I look forward to that. I think it's going to increase um, you know, public safety just by definition. All parking will be on site and that has been discussed in, in great detail based on occupancy load. It's also understood by myself that there will be no parking on the road. It all has to be on site. So people can't pull up and park along the shoulder. That's not to be tolerated. Um, if we want to talk a little bit about the speed limit as you approach the subject property from the north, it's posted 45 miles an hour, 600 foot before my driveway. And the sign is up and um, I don't know what more could be done. I would like to see the hill cut down myself. I think that would help, but um, the suggestion currently is that we'll move the driveway, and again, it's a recommendation, that we'll move the driveway to the south end of the property in order to give people more um, you know, time to react. The road <coughs> is posted elsewhere <coughs> 55 miles an hour, but in front of the school, and as you approach the school from the north, it's posted 45 miles an hour. And one of the suggestions that I have made to the planning staff is I would make every effort to bring people in from the south where you have a good level view as you approach the property so there's, there's you know, not going to be a, a problem with the, the back side of the hill. Um, I am very concerned about safety myself. And the reason being is, is I'm going to be the first one they come after if there's a problem. And I'm not talking about the neighbors, I'm talking about anybody that gets hurt on the property. They're going to come after me. And I have, you know, uh, a, a real vested interest in making sure that that doesn't happen. Um, Mr. Smith talked about the degradation of property values. And I think it could be argued, since he's lived in his home, since it was built new in 2006, that the blighted condition of the school, he's lived through the worst of times, and yet since 2006, his property has appreciated $80,000. The property immediately across the road from the schoolhouse, which in articles posted in the journal World suggested <laughs> that the reason that the property wasn't selling was because of the trash and the debris on the school ground properties, and the woman had 5.94 acres she was trying to sell, and she wasn't getting any offers. In fact, she had gotten offers, but they weren't to her liking. I made two myself, because I'm looking to make an investment in the neighborhood and be a neighbor myself. And I wasn't able to put together a deal with her, but I started cleaning up the property in August. I pulled off the job in late October due to the weather, and now I'm ready to go back out there and finish what I started. The property across the road sold in January of 2018, 5.94 acres, and it sold for $12,500 an acre. If anybody in this room is familiar with rural prices of undeveloped land, uh, it's a flat track, there's no trees, there's no 
topographical interest to this property, it's a flat field, that's a record price. So evidently that person didn't think that seeing the condition of the school, you know, when he was considering the property and the cleanup that has gone on since, it hasn't hurt his property value and to date it hasn't hurt the Smith's property value either one. There are no predictive models and I work in real estate daily to suggest how the uh, conditional use permit and the activities associated with it would affect property values. I, I don't want to predict doom and gloom. It's not in my nature. I don't want to assume worst case scenario. Who's going to enforce it, Mrs. Smith's asked. I'm going to enforce it. If there's a problem, I'm going to be on it. The neighbors won't have to call the sheriff. I will. I don't want any nonsense out there. It's not the kind of venue I'm looking to put in, and I'm not going to let you know people come in and, and uh, run my you know my investment into the ground. Um, is it going to run 24/7, 365 days a year? No. I can tell you as an event promoter, buildings of any size sit dark Monday through Friday for the most part. You know, building rentals are weekend activities, user groups, people that you know, are off of work. And um, so there's no reason to believe that it's going to be Grand Central Station out there. It's just not going to happen in the overall scheme of things. I went out there yesterday and, you know, noise was brought up. And the Cedar Hill Gun Club <coughs> is off in the distance. But when I'm out there working and picking up trash and bagging trash, loading dumpsters, I hear shotgun blasts in the afternoon, I hear them in the evening, I hear them on the weekends. And so I thought, I wonder how far that is away from the school. So I drove it yesterday. It's 2.4 miles. And I guess I was a little surprised that, you know, a shotgun blast would travel that far, but it did. So I'm not going to be the only possible source for noise. There's a plowed field between the Smith's property and my own. And, you know, that farm machinery when they're planting and when they're harvesting, that all, that all creates noise. The distance between my property and their property is the length of a football field. He, he noted that it was about 200 yards and that's pretty close to being right. The reason I use the football field description is behind his house, the Church of the Nazarene has a sport field with stadium style lighting and bleachers and it's very close to his property, but that's not being discussed here. I just thought it would be noteworthy to bring it up. Um, loud music, I'm not interested in that. Rock and roll bands, stage shows, rowdiness, no, that's not what this is about. It's, it's a genteel crowd that I'm looking for. Um, The thing I've learned in this process, I had a four-hour meeting with Sean Reed and his staff and a representative of the planning staff. I thought I'd be in and out of this meeting in an hour. It took four hours, and it was delightful. I mean, I was like enjoying every minute of it, and I think they were too, because they were getting information from me, and I was gathering information from them, and it was a very, very friendly exchange. It was time well spent. But the thing that I walked out of that meeting with a very clear understanding, it gets back to the old adage when carpenters say, you know, measure twice and cut once, or I cut the board three times and it was still too short. You have to ask questions. You know, I want to be a good neighbor. I want to be a responsible, you know, owner. And I want the, the neighbors to eventually recognize me for who I am at a personal level and the type of endeavor that I'm wanting to share with the public at large. Um, I think as far as the number of acres required for a modern septic system under new construction, I think I hear a lot of numbers bantered around and so I'm not going to go on the record as saying what the requirement is, but I know one of the things, no matter how many acres you have, the soil has got to perk. And if it doesn't perk, then you've got to go to plan B. And um, I have contacted KDOT because I wanted to know the number of both single vehicle 
and multiple vehicle accidents along 1500 Road from South Lawrence Traffic Way to North 1000 Road. And they have yet to get back with me, but the reason that I was more interested in multiple vehicle accidents, because to me, that's somebody that, you know, due to their own neglect or inattentiveness, might have potentially hurt someone else. But if you run your car off in the ditch at night and you're alone and there's no other car involved, that's driver error. But I want to know what those statistics are. I don't want to just throw a number out at you and say, well, this is the number. I want to base it on facts. I want, I want everyone to have a clear understanding of, you know, the reality of what's going on out there. And I think that concludes everything I would like to say to you. So I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. With that, we will bring the discussion back up to the commission for questions for the applicant or staff. Discussion or motions? Commissioner Sands. So I was on the uh, ArcGIS map. Um, normally when the traffic count overlay can, can be pulled up, uh, it doesn't have anything on here for the traffic count overlay. Specifically because one of the uh, neighbors asked about when the last time that traffic survey was done. I was kind of interested about that too. Is there any way we can figure that out? Because I could not find it. I would have to ask Keith Browning. He gave me that figure, so I'd have to ask him when that count was taken. Okay. Commissioner Willie. I'm first. Um, a question for staff, for Mary. Um, it's fairly close to other residences. Uh, have we, do we have a history of any other event center that's as close to other residences as this is planning to be? I know we have other uh, event centers out in the county, but it seems that they have a larger setback from other residences. Do you have any feeling for that? And I'll just follow that since it's similar, but also on a, a similar sized lot. I don't know all the CUPs we have. Um, in the southeast corner of the county, we have a recreation center, and I can't remember the name of the owners. I believe it's on a large parcel. We have Good Earth Gatherings, which is classified as recreation, but it's primarily crafts and classes, <clears throat> so I don't think it would be the similar thing. Stony Hill. Stony Point. Stony Point, thank you. Yeah, that um, doesn't have neighbors quite so close. There was a Serenata Farms in Ball Big Springs. It turned into a indoor softball facility, but um, it was a recreation center at one time. So I'm not thinking of any that are very similar. Thank you. Commissioner Butler. Um, to address Smith, Ms. Smith's comment, I think, or question, it was are these conditions required that are listed in the staff recommendation report? And as I read the report where the word shall is used, then that would be a requirement. The only place I don't see that is where it talks about um, <coughs> parking in subsection 5C, which is the roadway parking, but otherwise my reading of this, and Mary, you can comment, would be that the, words, the use of the word shall means it's a requirement. Yeah, everything in their staff is recommending those conditions. I'm recommending that you recommend approval of them to the county commission. Once the county commission votes on them, they are conditions. So the recommendation is happening between me and the planning commission and you and the county commission. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Carpenter. <clears throat> I guess I have a question for somebody on staff. What are the current rules for obtaining a um, water meter in the county right now <coughs> uh, what do you mean by what are the rules well, well you know for a while <clears throat> i know i'm out of date you had that a certain size a lot before you could purchase a water meter and then hook up to the rural water district we still have requirements like i that? haven't heard of a minimum size a lot i know that you know you have to be three acres per the sanitary code for a septic system but i've never heard a water district 
having a minimum lot size for a water meter. I did talk with the representative from Rewater District 4, and he said they could serve this property, but they would have to petition to be included in their boundaries and then extend the main. Okay. So I assume the size area wasn't a problem. And can somebody speak about the actual requirements of a septic system for an event center? With how that's configured, and is it different from a residential? That would be the health system? department. Usually, they look at what's going to be the load. They want to know what's the consumption. With other CUPs we've done, they've asked the applicant to provide their consumption information, how many people they determine, how much water will be going through the system, and then they determine on the size. And I don't get involved in that. That's left up to the health department. Which brings me to number three, mm -hmm. that if you're going to have bathroom facilities, you're not going to be operating on bottled water. So they're going to have to be hooking up to the water system. So I'm just, this is, it's feasible that they're going, I mean, we know the water district says they can extend the line. Right. And I think they may use well water for the toilets. They okay. have well water. It's what they're using now. But so this can't property drink does have a well. I noticed pump out there, but it, mm -hmm. but it looked like it was on a cistern. It is. So I don't know. I didn't know if there was actually there is, a well. There is, there is a well. There's a there is. Well. <clears throat> and Mr. Chairman, I might add, since we have Sean Reed, the director of, of zoning and codes, <laughs> if there's something that he feels like he can address specifically for you too, I just Hopefully you offered him the opportunity Absolutely. to answer any questions. Be happy to have you. Uh, thank you, Scott. My name is Sean Reed. I'm Director of Zoning Codes for Douglas County. Um, based on the rough drawing that I've seen of the property, um, we've determined a maximum occupant load. The occupant load in the building code is a per square foot per occupant uh, factor that's used essentially for, for two elements. One. It's used to determining uh, the building's um, maximum capacity with regards to safe exiting in the event of conflagration or rapid evacuation of the building. It determines the number of exits, the total width of exits, exit signage, the type of panic hardware, whether that's required or not. The second thing it's used for is determining uh, toileting facilities and um, uh, bathroom facilities and based on the drawing that I've seen um, and the maximum use occupant factor which is uh, standing space occupant load five square feet per person um, they would be required to provide one men's water closet one men's lavatory two women's water closets one women's lavatory, one drinking fountain, one service sink. The upper portion of the, the building uh, that's been proposed for an apartment, um, looking at it as a dwelling, um, would be required, uh, the minimum requirements for the uh, dwelling unit would be, um, it must have a bathroom. The bathroom has to have a bath or a shower, a lavatory, and a water closet. In addition to that, the dwelling unit would be required by the code to have a kitchen sink. So when you put this all together, um, I know I, I'm not an expert on septic systems. I used to evaluate them 40 years ago, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an environmental sanitarian. I know that in a dwelling unit, the total um, projected usage for the dwelling is based on the number of bedrooms. Um, the commercial use uh, is factored in other manners. But in terms of the number of facilities, you basically have um, four water closets, um, three bathroom sinks, a bathtub, a drinking fountain, and a service sink. If that gives you an idea, in terms of the usage. I know commercial usage is calculated differently than residential usage because residential usage is seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Commercial usage typically is not. But I don't know what the factor is. The health department would use Douglas County's environmental sanitation code, which is based in national sanitary standards to determine the uh, capacity of the septic system. Thank you very much. Very helpful. Thank you. Commissioner Willie. I have a question for the applicant. 
uh, or staff, either one, um, have, has there been any discussion about the use of porta potties or anything like that for the outdoor event center, or are we all, are, do we need to come up with a full solution for the bathroom situation that Sean has outlined? There has not been a discussion of porta potties, and that's one of the questions that has occurred to me also because I know that a lot of times in public venues, privately promoted or otherwise, there are the use of porta potties. Um, the other thing that I m maybe didn't suggest earlier is that when I was talking with Keith Browning of the uh, engineering department, you know, we did a study of the driveway, and one of the problems of the current driveway is that it comes off the road bed at an angle. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. You can only answer the question okay. that I asked. Okay, okay, okay. But if we have any further questions about the driveway, okay. we'll be sure okay, to ask, it, ask it. Thank you. I am having some significant difficulties with this septic system on such a small lot. Um, I know I'm not the health department and that it's in here that they would have to look at that and decide. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with being able to pass on any of the other pieces without knowing how that piece is going to fit into here um, and how that then translates into how many people will be allowed for the venue for the CUP. Uh, usually we have that information when we're having the public discussion as far as how many people are likely to be on site for, for a venue, for something like that. Um, an acre, 1.6 acres, I can understand that being grandfathered in for a single residence. Uh, I struggle with something that would be greatly larger than that. I said, I'm, I'm not the health department, but I uh, do have a little bit of experience with soils and, uh, and percolation tests, and I, I really think that it's going to be a struggle not only to fit it here, which is not our issue, that's for the health department, but also the fact that that green space where the septic system is designed to go is expected to be used as outdoor um, entertainment space. Uh, I, I, I would be surprised if the health department didn't have a problem with that. Um, what nobody wants to talk about is that all of our septic systems fail sometimes when the water log, soils are waterlogged in the spring. And it's just we have to, we plan for that and we oversize them greatly so that they work for single family residences. Um, but there's not a lot of space <coughs> with that. I don't know what the other engineering solutions are and the health department will know that. But, but I, I do hear the concerns from the residents that had to have their three acres that yes, this was grandfathered, but now we're kind of pushing the limits of that. So I, I have some concerns with that. We'll see what else we come up with as we discuss. Thank you. Commissioner Sands. Uh, I'm, I'm also struggling with the, the septic uh, requirements, but I did find something on, I'm sure is an incredibly <coughs> reputable website called Inspectopedia. I'm sure it's referenced all the time by our city and county inspectors. <laughs> but uh, it does say average sewage wastewater flow gallons per day, and it, and it Sir, if you would come back up. I did not catch your name in the first second. Oh, you, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm Sean, Sean Reed. Sean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Director of Zoning Codes, Douglas County. So with the, you said, I think four, two, three water closets, three latrines, drinking fountain, kitchen sink, service sink, et cetera, et cetera. Are you able to estimate average sewage wastewater flow per day? With, with I those. am not competent to make that calculation. Uh, and actually, based on the paperwork we've seen so far, it would be four water closets, um, three lavatories, one drinking fountain, one service sink, and one bath or shower. But we, but you can't give us a. I I can't, can't. determine this. Uh, that would be the work of an environmental sanitarian, like. Um, uh, somebody from the Lawrence Douglas County Health Department. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Uh, because on that website, it does say one, two, or three bedroom house uh, requires a thousand gallon tank, which then requires a uh, minimum septic tank liquid surface area. So I assume that's the, the field. Is that right? I'm afraid we're not going to be qualified for that question either. Mm -hmm. I'd be Which I'd be afraid of getting too far into the weeds with that because we're not qualified to answer it either. It'll have to go. No, to no. The I mean, but what's the what's the septic tank liquid surface area? Is that the that would be the, the, like the size of square feet of the septic tank itself? Okay, so it's thirty four feet, thirty four square feet. Square feet. So I don't know if 
that's if that's just helping the, anyone. That's just the tank. That's not the lateral field. Okay, that that's that what helpful? I was wondering if it was okay. a lateral field or not. Well, Inspectopedia doesn't say how big the lateral <laughs> field will be, so I'm going to Now we're really here. So. Uh, fire off an angry uh, missile to them. Shall we hear from Sean Reed again on this matter? Excuse me, Mr. Sands? Yes. I am not an expert, but okay. I do know Neither that <laughs> the, the calculations for leach fields are based on the tank capacity okay. and the quality of the soil, the leaching quality of the soil. Okay. There are matrix, matrices which <coughs> cross-calculate those two, and uh, that's how the, the quality of soil determines the amount of leach field that's required. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Willie. Are we comfortable with another topic? Um, Ms. Smith asked about enforcement for this, uh, for the CUP, or any violations of that. M Mary, do you want to speak to that, or, sh or Sean? I know there are different pieces depending on whether the county, which portions yeah, of the county. I see usually as if ACP is amended or revoked by the county commission, but Sean's office would be responsible for the enforcement, so he should answer that. Okay. Do you mind? That's correct. Uh, Sean Reed, Douglas County Zoning Codes. Um, the Zoning Codes office uh, takes complaints from the public and investigates those complaints. Um, the uh, a, a method of enforcement is um, taking the CUP back to the county commissioner, board of county commissioners, and um, seeking revocation or modification of the CUP. Thank you. Don't leave. Sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Carpenter. I one guess of, I should write my name here too. Yeah. <laughs> one of the proposed recommendations is <clears throat> kind of unusual for what's been happening with these requests lately is that this one this particular CUP, if approved, um, the recommendation that we'd ask the county to approve is it be reviewed every five years. So when you have those that have a periodic review, um, is your staff contacted to give a list of all the complaints during the, that period of time? We have files in which we catalog the complaints. We also now have um, an electronic uh, database that allows us to um, accumulate uh, a history of complaints and investigation results. Um, typically what happens uh, is uh, a member, our planning and zoning coordinator, a uh, member of our county staff, um, goes to the site along with um, a representative of uh, uh, Douglas County Lawrence uh, planning and they conduct an investigation uh, of the site <laughs> to determine whether or not uh, at, at the five-year interval periods they determine whether the site is in compliance or not in compliance with the conditions of the um, uh, of the CUP. Uh, they produce a report that then is taken before the County Commission and um, it uh, in a, a manner very similar to uh, staff reports that you review during your process in the Planning Commission the um, uh, uh, representatives uh, make a presentation to the county with regards to their findings at these set intervals. We also, I should point out, have a, now have a, a um, essentially an, an Excel uh, spreadsheet that defines um, the time for reinspection and uh, on those um, CPs that have uh, uh, conditional reviews, periodic reviews. And just having, just the fact that there's a five-year review process does not preclude the possibility that if the violations are egregious enough or often enough that the county can initiate the process to revoke the CUP prior to that five-year review. That is an accurate statement, Mr. Carpenter. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Weaver. For staff. Uh, Am I understanding that there's currently a drilled well that serves the residents now? That's my understanding. Yes. Yes. And, and I assume then when the health department does their <coughs> investigation of the septic system, they'll take into consideration whether or not that well would still be a viable use for potable water. I believe they've already determined it wouldn't be viable for potable okay. water for public use. So they said irrigation, other uses would be fine, but okay. not for drinking. Commissioner Willie. Then I assume that would also not be useful for the apartment for, because it would need potable water 
also. That's my understanding. Okay. And bottled water is not then a viable use for that. It would only be for the event, right? Mm -hmm. That was mentioned as bot bottled water as a possibility, but that would only count for the event. We'd still need to have potable water for. Bottled the water could be used for the apartment. You can have large bottles of water that they could use for the drinking water. I see. Thank you. Commissioner Sands. Where, where is the well currently? Drilling down into the property. It is north. Excuse me. It is north of the northwest corner of the building, okay. and it's my understanding that it was functional up until the time that I uh, took the property over. They had been using that as their water source. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Sinclair. Uh, this is probably a question for Mary, but the, uh, the sort of the diagram, the plan that is included in the packet, is that something that is uh, binding upon the applicant or is that just given for sort of information purposes? That will be binding when it's approved. It gets signed and stamped <coughs> and then it gets released to the Zoning and Codes Office along with the release, release memo, which we say that all conditions that could be met at that time have been met. They'll review it to make sure the remaining conditions are met, the septic system is put in, um, the driveway is moved. Once that's all done, then they can issue a conditional use permit. Once they get the permit, the use could commence. However, they also need to get the building permit and the certificate of occupancy. So there are several steps, but once it's stamped, it is binding. And so uh, to the extent the driveway has to be moved, um, is, that, is there a chance that the driveway will have to be moved to where it would cross where the lateral fields are now, the lateral field is? That's possible, and if so, then the health department would have to work on that and see if the lateral lines would need to be moved. And so there's a, I guess I'm trying to think about how this diagram may very well look quite a bit different if the driveway is moved and goes onto the area where the outdoor event area is or onto the lateral field. I'm just trying to get a sense of how everything will get moved around parking-wise septic system, driveway, um, if that's something that, if it's changed quite a bit, it'll get changed and approved if it's done subject to the conditions that are set out without further public hearing, correct? Yes, it depends on the degree of change. If things went in and the parking lot had to be moved to the other side of the building or you know, something major, then it would require more review. It, I believe it would go to the county commission unless we were directed to bring it back to you major changes would require review. We can only administratively <coughs> approve things that are pretty insignificant, you know, if it's just the driveway crosses over, um, that's pretty insignificant. But if the parking area actually moves, which is the major thing that's being changed at the site, then that would, that would require some commission approval. Okay. Commissioner okay. Kelly. Oh, sorry. She, Commissioner Willie? Yet another. Um, Airbnb or short-term rentals, I know they're all over. Are they currently allowed in the county? Yes, they are. We have a use called lodging, boarding, or rooming houses. I'm not sure the order of those, but mm -hmm. those are permitted. Okay, thank you. With CUPs. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kelly? So my comment maybe has less to do with all the technical issues of septic tanks and where the water is and is the water good it's it's the purpose of conditional zoning because we need to be about land use i'm going to leave septic tanks and water use and the number of toilets to awesome people like sean and figuring that out what what we use conditional zoning for is some flexibility when the existing zoning doesn't work within our current neighborhood and there's a desirable other use We've had CUPs that come forward and we put some conditions on them so that the neighbors feel comfortable with the use based on those conditions, that we are stepping away from the zoning that we currently have in place because we feel like it's desirable to make that work. I'm struggling listening to the neighbors tonight that we would need to vary from the current zoning as written um, 
I, I, it has to be, in my mind, desirable for both the neighbors and for the property owners. It's not a tool to force a different use in, in my mind. Um, we've had other CUPs that have come before us and I think they're really difficult because you want to give the property owners some rights to do with what they want with the property. I could also argue that they could find another place to do the same thing that is correctly zoned for this. So I'm struggling not from a septic tank issue, driveway issue, any of those things. I think those are very important, but I'm more concerned that the overall use, the land use doesn't seem compatible with the neighbors. Um, I think it has a lot to do with maybe size of lot and distance from their homes than it does the technical issues. So right now that's where I am. As we love to say on this commission, my mind may change, but I, I wanted to, to maybe get us thinking about the land use. Thank you, Commissioner Kelly. Commissioner Butler. I tend to echo what Commissioner Kelly said. However, I know there have been places in the city where we have an establishment that is in a neighborhood, um, I believe to the east of us, that has um, the ability to have longer hours to accommodate um, various social events or, or um, gatherings. So I struggle with, I hear the neighbors and I appreciate the neighbors coming and give us, giving us their opinions um, with having you know, a couple of places in the city that are surrounded by many neighbors that have kind of the same use and then a place in the county that wants to do it as well. And I, I do hear what Commissioner Kelly's saying about, you know, a landowner being able to use their property as they so desire and the neighbors um, having an input, especially for people that have lived out in that area for 20 plus years. Um, and I just don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm struggling with that also. I would like to see this building redone. Um, the use and proximity are, are a, a, a bit of a struggle for me. I think that um, the aims of this application are are good, and I would like to see uh, the highest use of this property that can be made. Um, I I share the concerns of, of Commissioner Willie about the, the septic, but I'm trying not to uh, I'm trying not to. The health department will deal with that, um, and uh, that's what they do. We don't do that. Um, I uh, and without suitable facilities, the project will not proceed by, by their recommendation or by their denial. Um, and so I am I'm trying to think, as Commissioner Kelly said, about the use. <clears throat> I'm also thinking about the proximity. Um, I appreciate the applicant's um, aesthetic regarding his target clientele. Um, I appreciate that. I, I, I would want that reassurance as a neighbor as well. Um, but I am, I am struggling with, with putting this use here, um, despite my wishes that this, this building be put to its, to its highest use. Commissioner Kelly. So since we've referenced the outhouse and I want to be clear I'm very <laughs> excited to search for the outhouse on the city's website the city's internet server and not my own um, <laughs> so is my wife um, <laughs> there is a sizable difference between that property and the next neighbor's property I mean the distance between them is much larger and I was compelled in my thinking, listening to Mary say she couldn't think of another um, 
event space that was as close as this one was. Did I understand you correctly, Mary? Yeah, I know I don't you don't have the exact inventory of everything. Mm -hmm. I don't You're believe... pretty amazing, but maybe not that. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe the outhouse has a CUP, so I wasn't even, I'm not even sure where that is. Okay, so, it, you know, but if we, since we've referenced that one as an event space, a late night event space, the distance between that and the neighbors is, is significant. Um, I remember other CUPs, like there's one in North Lawrence that we did a while back. It was an expansion that feels a lot like this one. And again, the distance to out by the airport, the distance seems a lot further. I tried to find that one, but I didn't have much luck. The distance seems a lot further than we're looking at for this one. Um, which, which is impacting my feeling on whether this is the right, whether to approve or not approve the conditional use permit. I think, I think the cider gallery is fairly close, but there has to be consideration for this, the density of the neighborhood around it. And so when I look at the, the golden criteria, where the suitability of the, of the subject property for the uses for which it's been restricted, I don't know that the use is suitable. I don't know that um, that the zoning and the character of the neighborhood is maintained if this is allowed to, to go forward. But we're, when we talk about trying to find a comparable example, the only one I can think of is to the east of here is the cider gallery where it's so, I mean, but that's so close because of the design of just the way things went up. It's an urban location. The, it's an urban location. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And, and I, yeah, I would say it's a total different expectation. If you live in the exactly. polar building, you have a totally different expectation. Yes. I think the neighbors made a good case. That's if they wanted to live that close to that sort of, they would have moved there, I yeah. suppose. But that's not what they're expecting in their in the property that they purchased. So that's why we have zoning, <laughs> right? We, we we have agricultural because we expect more distance between uses. And I balance that against the fact that we issue CUPs and approve them in order to not only provide the owner with flexibility to, to follow through with the project, but also to give protection to the neighbors through our enforcement and our conditioning of that permit. Uh, and that is the balance that we are charged with finding and seeking. Um, and so in this case, I go back to my wish to see this building used to its highest use. And I think an honorable use and, and a nice sounding clientele um, with this, this really the proximity issue and you know we have con we have some controls on the hours as well I would say that's certainly a big difference between this and, and the outhouse um, uh, would be the hours of operation um, and uh, and so I, I would I would ask the public to understand that we <coughs> seek to protect neighborhoods with the CUP as well as provide flexibility for an applicant to proceed with plans. Commissioner Willie. How did you know? Hmm. Um, Wild guess. Yeah. So I love rural schoolhouses, and there's one near me also, um, and I love that you've cleaned it up. It really needed it, and, and it's fabulous to see that improved. I do really struggle with the proximity of an event location uh, to the other rural residences there. And I, I don't think that I can vote in favor of the event space there um, for, for that reason. I mean, I'm also a rural resident, and sound really does carry very far in the country, um, even if that, you know, so. Um, so that I would possibly still be in favor of the short-term rental. I'm, I'm not sure that that, to me, that's more <coughs> of an inside activity um, would still provide for um, some monetization of that property. I think I would be in favor of that. I don't know if it's possible for us to split those uses, but I just would like to hear from the rest of the commission. I would, I would agree uh, with your assessment that allowing one use but not allowing both seems to make sense at least if it's if living quarters are developed it's kept as a residential function in a residential area I have a question Commissioner Kelly so currently we do 
this is a question for staff. Currently, we don't have, or maybe for Sean, we don't have anything that says if you're running an Airbnb out of your residence in the county that you must have a CUP for lodging. The only way you're allowed to have an Airbnb is if you fit under either one of the uses that's permitted in the A district or one of the conditional uses. So since we have a conditional use that's called rooming, lodging, or boarding house, they weren't considering Airbnb at the time when they wrote that, but it would fall under that classification. So it doesn't specifically say the sentence, but it's only allowed if you have that CUP. I'd add to that that the building code would permit um, a variety of lodging, uh, rooming house, or boarding activities. Um, the intensity of the transient or non-transient use of the property would impact some of the requirements the building code would have for it. Um, but <coughs> those are, that's part of our process working with the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sinclair. Uh, this schoolhouse isn't on any registry or anything, correct? It is not. Uh, and did I read the staff report right that commercial dog kennels are permitted? Would be a, a, a use that be permitted in this? It is permitted in the A district, but you have to be 200 feet from your okay. property line, so I don't think it would work on this okay. property. Okay. And so would the same thing apply for things like animal clinics? An animal clinic would be allowed. I don't believe. I, I think they have special septic system requirements, so okay. very likely it wouldn't be able to actually be <clears throat> done on this property either. Okay. It could be a school or a church without getting a CUP. It could have a CUP for a daycare center. I mean, there's various uses that might be. Okay, I'm just trying to get a sense, I guess, of what, if, if this wasn't what was, if we denied this request or, or rec, you know, went against recommending approval, what the applicant could do if we could raise the school and put up, what are the alternatives? They may not be as palatable to an event center to neighbors. I don't know if that's, I guess I, I don't, I was looking at the list here, and I guess if it's, if it's church or, you know, daycare, those are the options. Um, if that's something that would be more acceptable or less acceptable and more uh, in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood or less. And I say that just because I, I guess I have, this to me doesn't, it doesn't give me as much heartburn as I'm hearing some of the other commissioners uh, saying, so long as it's done uh, within some of the um, conditions that are being put on the, the applicant. The only concern I really have about it is it seems so, uh, it, it seems very fluid. I mean, we really don't know uh, right now how it's going to look, and so I feel a little, you know, hesitant to recommend approval without knowing, you know, where the driveway will actually be or where the lateral field is going to be or where the parking is going to be and those kinds of things. So I guess I'm, I'm having trouble um, wanting to approve this, but maybe for different reasons than some of the other commissioners have vocalized. Commissioner Culver. <clears throat> don't don't want to uh, be redundant with what other commissioners said, but a lot of this to me is, is difficult in the fact that if you look at this piece of property and where it's at with proximity to the residential homes around it, you take that school building off of there and you and somebody came in with the CUP to do an event space center on that same property. I'd have a real hard time fitting it in this area, in this neighborhood, in a rural area. Um, so I, I think that attraction of that existing building is there, but I try and think of it outside of that a little bit, and is that, is that parcel appropriate for this use under these conditions with the proximity and, and the, the uses that are around it? Um, and to me, it, it's, it's a real challenge. I think there's some technical challenges there too with this specific parcel that we really don't need to go into as much. Um, 
but I'm having I'm having a hard time with the, that real close proximity to the neighbors, and and really with some risks to that roadway with people coming in and out of there and that driveway having to be moved. I think that can improve it, but still, I think there's some concerns and risks there. But I mean, I could be persuaded to to be in favor of this, but really at at this point in time, it's really hard to. I'd like to see that that site be used, but I just don't know if this is the right place for it. Commissioner Carpenter. I'm not exactly sure <clears throat> what I want to say here. Um, <laughs> I'm it's the first. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm going to remind everybody of some of the concerns they had here tonight with other projects. Um, I've been kind of on the fence with this from the beginning. I mean, when I was out at the property and I came out, I almost got clipped by a pickup truck <laughs> coming over that rise. So, you know, I, I, I appreciate, you know, there's, there's risk about entry and exit out there, and I don't know what could be done to adequately address that. And, and a lot of the technical questions I think come up go to just how high the hurdles are for a final conditional use permit to actually be issued in this situation, even if we felt, because really it comes down to, do we think an event center is appropriate on this property or not? And then we're recommending a lot of conditions, including a review period. And some of these are pretty high hurdles. I mean, I mean, this, this, just the health department may stop this. If we said a, um, an event center was appropriate in this location, um, so, and I think part of my struggle was just how realistic it is, and it seemed like it was a little bit premature coming to us because of all these concerns that have been raised without having better answers, and I've heard that kind of sentiment from several commissioners here about the sewers, the, the roads, the safety issues, lighting, where the parking lots are. We have a lot of issues that aren't here, but the whole process I think sets, is set up that those are addressed and would be finalized by the county commission. So I'm really looking just, is an event center appropriate here? Can we put conditions on it, whether they can be met or not? That's the next step. I, and. Um, <coughs> And I'm still struggling with that now that I'm hearing some of these comments about the surrounding neighborhood. Um, I feel like I'm kind of on the opposite side all of a sudden in, in, in some of the ways I'm thinking about this. So I'm curious to hear where this goes. Commissioner Willie? <laughs> if, if we if we were going to be in support of this, I would want to actually ask for it to come back to us so that we saw the final site plan after the driveway were moved and the parking were moved and the septic system were put in and, and approved by, I mean, not put in, but approved by the health department. I would, would ask for that to come back to us. Um, if we are having a discussion about a use other than the event center, then, then, that's, then that would be where it would stop but but if we're if we're looking at still at the the event center I would want to see all of that come back to us and have us have a final approval before it went to the County Commission that's how my feeling about it anyway Commissioner Sands so to your point though um, if we if we consider a motion for deferment we're still gonna have a lot of the same problems <clears throat> with just the use that we're already talking about. Mm -hmm. The character of the neighborhood, the, the current zoning that's under, suitability to subject property. We've all, you know, we've said it seems a little bit too small. Uh, we said it's, re it's really land constrained. So uh, I, I don't think the neighbors are gonna change their mind if a site plan comes back and it has solved the lateral fields and parking and driveway problem. Um, I, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I doubt that they're going to, that's going to be the thing that turns them around. Um, I, I, I'm with you in, in respect that we're trying to give the applicant a chance to, to your point that you said earlier, monetize the property as much as possible. 
Um, but I, I don't know that an affirmance is going to get us anywhere because we've got to give that that instruction to the applicant to be able to work on those things in a sequential order. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the <clears throat> the request, it's phrased as conditional use permit for recreation facility and rooming, boarding, and lodging. So I don't know procedurally if we were to, can we split that? We, we really can't. No. Okay. Oh, sorry, Patrick. Yeah. I, have a question. I have a question for the applicant. Um, did you meet did you meet with the neighbors and discuss your intention for this property before coming before us? Good question. I put out a letter um, after the county had uh, notified the neighbors that there was going to be an application process underway. And I sent everyone that was, um, you know, considered to be affected by the impact of the conditional use permit. I enclosed my business card, which had my email address and my telephone number on it, and no one responded or contacted me. And so, I'm sorry. none of the neighbors have stopped over, you know, to say, hey, welcome to the neighborhood, or good job, or anything else. I mean, there just has been no contact sure. with the neighbors. Sure. We have had instances where applicants have asked for a, a deferment at this point, you know, they may say, you know, I want to meet with the neighbors and see if there's a way that we can look at some conditions that will meet their needs um, and, and still make it a viable business for me. I mean, and sometimes they can't do that. I mean, sometimes, you know, they, we had uh, Mr. Smith, I think, out there said it's going to be every single night. I mean, a, a, you know, a different condition could say it's not going to be every single night. Right. Um, we've had that before, and so I just toss that out to you as the applicant. Scott, correct me if I'm getting outside. Okay, I toss it out to you as the applicant as a way of looking for a way to see is there is there a way we can come to a use for this property? I think Commissioner Sinclair makes a great point. You know, it, it sounds like a few, maybe more than a few months ago, it was in much a much worse place so we're doing better here um you know do we want to capitalize on some of that goodwill and find a way to use that property in a way that keeps it healthy and attractive to the neighborhood um, but also helps you recruit you know what is clearly a business venture for you so i i just throw that out to you as a possible option i would be amenable to that idea and you know speaking to um commissioner willie's you know point a lot of the answers to the questions that I've been asked by staff are unknown to me. I don't know the answers. It really depends upon is it going to be a, an event center, you know, properly managed and run and an asset, or is it going to be a single family residence, or, you know, is it going to be any other uh, intended, you know, purpose that's currently allowed under zoning? So it's not that I have been invasive. But I've had extensive discussions with Mary Beverly at the health department. She has since gone to Johnson County. And we agreed that <laughs> until I had more direction from this group and ultimately the county commissioners, you know, we weren't going to pump the system and determine the requirements of a, an event center if that wasn't going to happen. So same, same thing with lighting. I mean, uh, I don't want to intrude upon the neighbors. And uh, I want to be responsible and you know it's it's just in my nature you know so I just want to be an asset thanks uh, I would uh, only follow up to say that um, I take you at your word for your intentions in those regards both the technical and non-intrusive nature and your uh, target um, uh, audience or clientele as, as they say I want to return to uh, Commissioner Sands question just for clarity about the division of the two proposed <coughs> uses for this space. Um, and uh, Scott will correct me if I'm wrong, but we are faced with this, uh, this application for two uses, and I don't believe we would act on them individually uh, tonight. Is that correct? The, the Air and is only for a two bedroom. I mean, we have to revise it. Yeah, there may be some, some reframing of it if your recommendation to the county commission <laughs> is to support one and not the other, you know, how we finish and complete the conditional use permit may look a little different, but 
I think it's possible for that recommendation to come out of the Planning Commission. Tonight, you mean? Tonight, mm -hmm. to, to split them up. Well, it seems to me we can either make a motion for approval, disapproval, or we can make a motion for deferment to allow the applicant to maybe try to sketch out a solution. I was ready to make a motion for, uh, I was ready to make a motion, but if, now that we have deferment on the table, I'm probably not, you know, I'm, I'm hold my cards up this way. And, and Mr. Chairman, I say that, just that one thing about the, about the deferral option is I, I think it is important to understand this septic issue to the greatest extent possible um, because, you know, what we're seeing now, and we oftentimes, oftentimes try to advise that the public hearing is, should be the start of the discussion, not the end of the discussion. What we're hearing, I think, is a greater link to some of these technical issues to the use itself about where parking is, about where the outdoor space is, what that space looks like, the noise issues. So I guess what I would do if you're thinking about deferral is direct staff and the applicant on some, some of those specifics, you know, understand the septic issues and what the possibilities there are. Kind of, I think we have some work to do on conditions to present to you as a framework, understanding about lighting and noise and amplified music and all the things that we talk about when we talk about event centers. Um, so I, I guess I, I get the sense too, maybe it was a, a, it wasn't fully developed enough to bring to the commission to, to give you all the factors to consider. So if you're going to recommend deferral, then I would include all of those issues that you're gonna to wanna to see brought back to you. If the commission thinks that for the reasons of compatibility and all the other golden factors that it, it may not help, then you, know, you have an option of, of denial, recommending denial as well. If you recommend denial, it would go directly to the county commission with that recommendation. The county commission then has some options. Um, they could send it back to you for, to meet those same questions possibly. So just kind of offer those discussion items. My question would be if in the event of a deferral, what would be uh, not only those technical parking and, and um, septic issues uh, would be addressed, but perhaps the use as well, because I think a lot of commissioners are struggling with that mm -hmm. use as well. And, and uh, we've discussed the possibility up here and um, I don't, I've not heard from the applicant exactly about his willingness to change the use. We don't need to discuss that here, um, but um, that would certainly be among the items in play. Yeah, we could. Um, Commissioner Willie. Yeah, I'm leaning towards the deferment with the idea that it gives the applicant some time to having heard the discussion up here to kind of get the feel for where we may be leaning with it, but also just to get us some more answers and get yourself some more answers as far as what the, the real options are. I would say the, the event center for me would still be a very high bar. I don't want to say we defer and, and then and that all options are equally on the table, but I think you've heard that from the discussion that there, there, there are instances, I mean, if we had more neighborhood buy-in and that sort of thing over the course of the next time frame, um, where I would consider that. I'm not entirely ruling it out. I'm just saying it would be a very high bar for me, and of course I'm only one vote, but, but I, I would go for the deferment and say let's, let's look at some more options because I, I think that there can be some really great use of that property, and I'd like to see that happen. I would echo that sentiment that a great use is a great use, and I would love to see that happen there as well. For the commission discussion or a motion? Shall I make a motion? Please do. Okay. Um, I make a motion to defer the CUP 17-00313 uh, conditional use permit for recreation facility and rooming, boarding, and lodging house located on 1.2 acres at 1055 East 1500 Road. We have a motion for deferral. I'll well, we need to add some direction. Add some direction, and okay. I think, too, on this one, we might want to defer it to the May meeting, and if we don't get some of these issues completely explored, we always have the option to mm -hmm. show deferral on that, but we just need to keep the chain of notice going. Not okay. indefinite, yes. Okay. I would like to uh, recommend a deferral to the May meeting of the before-mentioned CUP um, and asking the applicant to come back with uh, specific septic requirements a, for, for the uses that are asked for, 
Um, also, the number of people and number of bathrooms that are being proposed <coughs> and the site plan. Maybe Very add live music and amplified music um, as something to consider as part. I heard you say that, Scott, as part of the conditions. Lighting plan. Did you get all that, Denny? <laughs> what Commissioner <laughs> Kelly said. Lighting plan also was on there. <laughs> this has been a group recommendation. <laughs> group motion. Yeah. Is the motion complete? I am complete. Scott, is it complete to your satisfaction? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. We have a motion. I'll I'll second. And a second by, <laughs> yeah. by Commissioner you Carpenter. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Uh, I want to thank the applicant and staff and the neighbors who came out for this, uh, for this discussion and especially my fellow commissioners. Uh, and with that, let us vote. Uh, all those in favor of the deferral, please raise your hand. Looks like 10-0. Thank you. On to item 10. Does anybody need a break? I'd like to do a talk. Okay. We will adjourn for, uh, let's say, seven minutes. Turn it eight forty three. <laughs> <laughs>
Did you have a good time in New Orleans? Yeah. Work, work, work. <laughs> Eating is my favorite thing to do. Shall we go on to number 10? We're back. Is this going to be as long as number 9? I mean, as number 8? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, the Planning Commission initiated this rezoning um, a little while ago, so it may go pretty quick. This was the one that, it was just a clerical error uh, way back when. It's for 1212 Louisiana in 1971. A person who had an office, wanted to have an office in an apartment building, so they requested rezoning to the R01 district. They had the right address, but they put the wrong lot number on the application. So when the ordinance went through, <coughs> the next door property got rezoned. So this is just correcting that. And so, um, <laughs> no, 1971, no one was here. She will retire, so we can't yell at her. And this, <laughs> we can still yell at her. I think we said it was her first day. <laughs> but this chart is from the staff report, and it just shows the non conforming. Um, the apartment will be non conforming anyway. It has six dwelling units, only five is allowed. But under the current zoning, only two dwelling units would be allowed in the apartment building, and a quarter of the area would have to be non commercial uses which in this residential area really isn't appropriate. And we did look at whether we should correct the zoning on the neighboring property, you know, and they don't have the office. It's a different owner now and it's just an apartment building. So I went through the golden factors, but we don't really have to look at that. And staff recommends approval of this. All right. Any discussion? How about a motion? I'll Christian make a Kelly. motion to All approve right. the rezoning request of approximately 0 0.13 acres from RMO UC to RM32 UC, forwarding it to the City Commission with a recommendation for approval based on the finding of facts found in the body of the staff report. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. Commissioner Butler, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. 10 0. Some of us didn't raise our hands very high. But <laughs> We're not being judged on enthusiasm, are we? Not at this hour. Okay, no. No, item 11, another rezoning. And this one was also rezoned by the Planning Commission. In uh, 2001, an annexation, a rezone, well, a rezoning request came in along with an annexation for this property. And the, um, annex, the zoning was approved subject to two conditions. It had to be annexed and a site plan had to be approved, which took care of the exterior storage on the um, property that we're looking at now, the east side of the lot. So in 2003, it was annexed into the city, and in 2003, a site plan was submitted that documented the existing uses, and that may have met the condition. The zoning wasn't a, changed at the time. In 2017, we did a site plan to add a food truck, and that site plan resolved that issue. And that's when we noticed that it already had an approved zoning. But because of the time lapse, we decided to go through the process again, just make sure it was appropriate. This shows the property, and we were rezoning it from CSUR to, U, to all CS, just so that we don't have to get the legal description for this little piece that's zoned UR. The RS-10 is also similar. Um, back in the day, when they used to annex into the city, it would get RS-10 or RS-1 zoning that converted RS-10, it really wasn't intentional for residential. So it's possible this property to the south will come through for a rezoning. It hasn't had one in the past that I can see. So this is a subject property. And it is compliant with the comprehensive plan and we do recommend approval of that. Thanks, Mary. Do I have uh, a motion or does somebody want to discuss? Commissioner Will. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just had a comment or a question. Uh, the east part of that lot that is urban reserve right now, it looks like a lot of that's in the floodplain and floodway. Um, sometimes we see in, that that is reflected in the zoning. Is that not necessary for here? We just, just because there's no additional use that's being considered? Right. In the city, that floodplain overlay is automatically attached. It's just that okay. when we annex property, we zone additional land to the floodplain. So if okay. we were annexing it today, we would probably zone the whole thing to the FP overlay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. What's on that property now? Um, it's a vintage motorcycle 
business and so when we started this they had a lot of exterior storage in the back it was just stuff their neighbors were putting on the property so it shows some of that in this area but that's been cleaned up since then so right now they're not using that portion but with this rezoning they could the only thing you can do when you have UR zoning is whatever you were doing when you got annexed so it's only can be used for agriculture until it gets a new zoning all right thank you mm -hmm. a motion Please. Commissioner Butler. Oh. You first. I think his question. Oh, do you have a question? No. Oh. So you're going to make a motion. <laughs> I'm just getting there. But. I move that we recommend approval of the rezoning request for approximately 0.97 acres from commercial strip and urban reserve districts to commercial strip district and forwarding it to the city commission with a recommendation for approval based upon the fact findings of fact found in the body of the staff report. Thank you. We have a motion, a second. Commissioner Sands, thank you. Any further discussion? Then let us vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. 10-0, thank you. One small miscellaneous item at the end. We actually did that Monday. That's that oh, residential yeah. lot inventory. Right. Um, <laughs> I've been careful. We didn't even need it. It does give me a good, see if we didn't need it. Um, we will. Yeah. It, it gives me a segue <laughs> to talk a little bit about mid-month. Um, we are planning to bring a discussion of residential lot inventory to your June mid-month. At your May mid-month, we have um, kind of a fun presentation about how the community design manual has been used, looking at original applications, architecture, and then applying our design manual to it, what we end up with. So um, the other thing that may, that you can um, expect is the main event, is usually we do a little bit of post national conference discussion from those who went. So that would be from staff, Sandy and Ashley, and some steam planning commissioners um, who missed Monday's meeting. <laughs> had a good temporary chair. That's how we pay them. back for missing Monday's meeting. So usually we do PowerPoints and you bring donuts and juice and stuff and it's a big- I'm just gonna problem. ask about bagels or donuts <laughs> or something. Um, I think that no, is it's just, you're just sharing nice. your little bit of knowledge of what you learned. Bagels. Right. That's where you pass out the souvenirs you brought. <laughs> Gosh, I brought it tonight in case we deferred a big item. You know, we had extra time. There but I guess we don't. And <laughs> and where are you going? All that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. uh, so, if that's the end of the miscellaneous business, let's adjourn. Poor <laughs> Brian. He's ready to be off this committee. Uh, short timer, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah.